Hey, hey, what's up guys, Fanboy here, and in this video I'm gonna be reviewing a product that I actually have been using for almost a year and a half now, so it's not a new product, but it's something that has become one of my favorite pieces of technology in my home automation setup at home, which is the Brilliant Control. And as I mentioned, this has been out for a little bit, I'd say at least a year and a half, and I have seven of these already installed in my home, and I've been using them for all this time. And I got an eighth one and thought it was a good idea to do an unboxing for you and also to take you through some of the features that, I, that make it one of my favorite home automation products ever. And before we do that, an interesting fact, did you know that in certain ancient cultures it was considered a noble act of selfless courage and a sign of superior intellect when someone subscribed to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button below and hitting like on the videos? Yeah, so you're gonna have to take my word for it because this is not on the internet, but uh, yeah, I would consider it. The button is right there. Anyway, let's get started by opening this bad boy up. All right, let's do this. Okay, let's take a look at the box first. Starting with the front. Brilliant home control, replaces a two light switch. As I mentioned, this comes in four different flavors, the, from one switch to four switches, meaning the number of loads that it can control. Quick installation tips, and then some information in the back. And here's a list of all the platforms that it supports. There are a few more that are not here on the back. This is actually a sticker, so I can tell that they already added this after they had the first run of the packaging and they had to add new devices to it. HomeKit wasn't available until, until about four months ago, three, four months ago. With the software update, they enabled HomeKit on the Britain controls. And it's been rock solid ever since, by the way. So yeah, so and then on this side, just the dimensions and stuff like that. So let's open it up. Nice. So actually, let me remove everything from the box and then explain to you how this works. But there's some cards, installation guide, then the hardware that actually controls the load, the light load, which is really nice and well made. And there are two buttons on the front so that even without the, the screen attached, you can control the loads and you can test the lights. Then a bunch of uh, pigtail wires and a bunch of wire nuts. So the way it works, the way you install the device is actually, uh, it's really well labeled and then the app itself guides you through the installation, but it works really well, it's super simple. And the terminals are, there's screws on the top there and all around and then you just basically insert the wire in there like that and screw it, tighten it. So you attach that to the wall and then you come with the screen. The screen is basically, it snaps in place. It was, it was slided and snap in place like that. The screen component is the brains of the operation here. Uh, we have the, the box itself that you attach, that you install on the wall and you attach the line and the loads to. This is the, uh, let's say, the henchman. This, this does the hard work of making the lights turn on and off. But all the smarts are housed in the screen unit and uh, it includes the touch screen and also the two sliders in this case because it's a two switch unit it, there are two sliders there and then on the top here we have a camera which allows you to do intercom to basically do video conference between the different if you have multiple brilliant devices installed in your home you can call them and do video intercom with the other brilliant devices you can also tap into the video feed of that camera remotely using the brilliant app on your phone which is pretty cool the image quality is nothing to call home about it's not uh great uh, i don't think it's even 1080p but it is it's cool to know it's there but also there is a little privacy screen that it can slide uh, and cover the camera to make sure that it's not spying on you. And also, this is an Alexa enabled device. It has Alexa built in. So you can also turn that feature off if you don't want the microphone to be listening to you all the time. There is an icon on screen that allows you to turn the mic off and disable Alexa completely. For the rest of this video, I'm gonna park myself in front of one of my already installed brilliant devices because that's where all the fun is, is actually just playing with the interface and connecting to your multiple devices, integrating with all the platforms and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and do that. The main interface with Brilliant Control is actually pretty simple. You have a top area with customizable widgets and a shortcut bar on the bottom. The shortcut bar has a bunch of options in it, like the ability to turn the Alexa microphone on or off, 
There is a home button where uh, it takes you to the different rooms in your house where you have devices installed. There is a link to add new devices directly on the Brilliant device itself and a long list of possible integrations there. You have a link to access your locks. So in this case, it's showing my August uh, door lock and uh, a link for the cameras, which allows you to tap into the live feed of any of the cameras on the other Brilliant devices and alarms. The widget area, as I mentioned, it is customizable. So you have, in this case, I have four links here, lights, which gives me control over all the lights in this room, which is the studio. I can also go to different rooms there. If the light being controlled supports colors, the Brilliant device will present the option to adjust the color right there on the interface. There is a link to climate where it takes me to the different thermostats. I have three thermostats and uh, three different zones here in my home. You can set, uh, set points there directly on the interface. You can change temperature modes, uh, system modes and everything. I also have a link for intercom, which allows you to basically call other devices on your uh, network, on your uh, local home network, and you can call them and do video conference with them. And in this case, I have a link to scenes, which I don't really have a lot of scenes set up on my Brilliant because I mostly use HomeKit scenes at home. So that's the main widget area. When you click on that little icon on the top there, that's the settings icon. And that allows you to basically customize almost everything on your Brilliant device. The first option there is control, where basically it gives you control over this specific device, the name, uh, location, and if you wanna turn on or off the video access uh, to tap into the, that little camera on the top there. Light, which is where you configure the load connected directly to this uh, brilliant device specifically. Home screen, which is where you can edit the four widgets that you can have on, uh, on your home screen. Display, which is where you go to uh, tell the device what library to use to showcase uh, your personal pictures or art on the standby screen like that. You can also adjust your gestures. There are two main gestures that you can use with your Brilliant device. You can use one uh, finger swipe on the main screen to turn the light that's connected to this device on or off. But if you swipe with two fingers, you control all the lights that are connected to it. So it turns off everything that's connected to that Brilliant device at once. Next, motion, which is what allows you to enable or disable motion control on this device, meaning the first option is to turn the display on or off as you walk by to uh, save energy and uh, to prolong the life of the display itself. It turns the display uh, automatically off after a certain delay, a certain amount of time. But when you walk in front of the display, it automatically turns it on and you can uh, adjust those settings there. Then this is really interesting, advanced motion settings. I really like the way they implemented uh, how granular you can control the amount of motion that it detects before it performs an action. And here you go to devices and it allows you to attach devices to certain, to motion detection. So you can tell it to turn certain devices on or off as it detects motion using the motion sensor on top there. Next, connectivity, which is where you go to set, uh, join your network and also to uh, update your brilliant device. Next is audio, media volume, volume and alert volume, which is just using the internal speakers to alert you and talk to you. Works with Brilliant, which shows you all the possible integrations that you can attach uh, to Brilliant and use the Brilliant device with. Privacy, where you go to adjust things like what devices can be accessible for video access remotely, configuration lock, if you want to lock this device so that nobody can mess with any of the configurations, and advanced, which is where you go to uh, turn on remote assistance. So if you need any help and, and the team at Brilliant needs to give you support, they can connect to your device remotely, and then you can reset all settings, home settings, and just some basic information there. The Brilliant app on your phone allows you to control devices remotely and also to tap into the live video feed of your Brilliant devices. But other than that, it really doesn't do that much more. It, there are some minor settings that you can adjust uh, using the Brilliant app, 
but uh, that's kind of it. I wish they had included the ability to manage your devices also using the Brilliant app so you didn't have to walk up to the Brilliant device that you wanted to adjust the settings for. You could do it all on your phone. All right, so if I haven't made myself clear by now, let me state it unequivocally. I think Brilliant controls are pretty awesome devices. Uh, I guess having eight of them in, at home kind of speaks for itself, it, uh, it kind of gives that away. But when you put together the fact that you have a screen, a touch screen where you can control all your music, your lights, your temperature controls, uh, you can connect it to a bunch of different home automation platforms like HomeKit, Google Home, Alexa, TP-Link Casa, Lifex, Lutron, SmartThings, a bunch of stuff, Echo B, and, and many, many more. You have video intercom and audio intercom, and you can control it remotely too using your phone. I, I think it's a really, really cool device. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. There's definitely some room for improvement. The first things that come to mind are the camera, I'd say is just passable. It's on a scale of one to 10, I'd give it a five and a half in terms of video quality. Uh, it's a really cool feature that you don't use that much, at least I don't use that much because the video quality is not that great. It's definitely not gonna replace a security camera. But it's a cool feature to have nonetheless and uh, hopefully they will release new versions with better cameras in the future. There's another thing that I think could be a little bit better which is the touch sensitive sliders. They work well, but there's a feature that you can just touch the top of the slider like that and it's supposed to uh, turn on your light to 100% immediately and that sometimes doesn't work for me. I have to slide all the way up so it never fails to recognize touch but sometimes it doesn't work when I just touch on the top to make it go to 100% quickly. So yeah, there's definitely some room for improvement there but the thing that I think is my least favorite part about Brilliant Controls is the price. So it's definitely on uh, on the expensive side of like home, uh, home automation devices in general. It starts at $300 for the one switch unit, so a, a unit that replaces one wall switch, and it goes up $50 as you go up like from there. So basically one switch, $300, two switches, $350, $400 for the three switches control and then $450 for the control with four switches. So it's pretty expensive. Is it worth the investment? I guess you could argue that like maybe if you don't have a uh, substantial home automation setup with a lot of devices, it's probably not worth the investment. But if you do have Sonos and you have a bunch of home automation devices at home, I think that the Brilliant Control is definitely worth considering. That's it guys, uh, hopefully this video was helpful and, and hopefully you liked the review of the Brilliant Control and if you did please hit like below and remember to su subscribe to the channel so you won't miss new videos with unboxings, reviews, cool Fanboy original products and much much more. Alright, catch you on the next one, Fanboy out!